got the power, my friend. So you better be friends with Judy also all the time. Yes, yes. Dr. Joy. The name says it all. You know, first time when I met her on a Zoom meeting, this has become a norm, right? I was mesmerized by the fact that her name is Joy. And then her st story started unfolding. And I kept on looking at the woman. I kept on saying, I bow to your resilience. My friend, you really practice what you say. Yes, she's a very famous coach. <clears throat> she's part of the landmark institution where people have, you know, we all have heard of name landmark and all. But what really in intrigued me about Dr. Joy was her personal story of perseverance, a personal story of resilience, art of resilience, what I call her to be the queen of that. So without any further ado, may I introduce to all of you, my dear friend, Dr. Joy, and may she inspire you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jenny. I appreciate your, um, your introduction. And let me get this off the screen, yeah. How about that? Thank you. Um, so Jenny and Judy, wow, it's so awesome to be here to speak to all of you today. And for the next 10 minutes, I'm going to be speaking to you on something I know that's dear to my heart, uh, reinvention and resilience. So my journey started out, um, I'm originally from Barbados. And from the age of 13, I lost my mom. And it's right then that I remember the words that she said to me, she says, Joy, You've got to plan your life in decades and reinvent yourself every five years. That's what keeps you resilient. And that has guided me uh, along my whole life. Um, have I gone through tragedy? Absolutely. But remembering her words, it's like, okay, you're down, but you're not out. And so resilience in itself is being able to come back from the adversities time and time and time again. Not that you feel like it. But it's the ability to take a licking and keep on ticking. That's how I define resilience. Um, and so from my early childhood, when I lost her at 13, I really had to say, okay, how do I carry on after this? And thank God for good friends and family who helped me out. Um, when I was, um, I might have a long career of being an occupational therapist and a neuroeducator. But each time I had to reinvent myself because at the end of the day, I realized that, um, you know, you can get a sixth sense that things are coming to a close. So I've always had a sixth sense and my career as an occupational therapist came to a close the day I went to the dentist. Okay, everybody goes to the dentist, yeah. But I had the bright idea to get my wisdom teeth taken out. Why did I do that? After that, I became paralyzed. And if it wasn't for acupuncture, I wouldn't be walking again. I wouldn't be sitting here in front of you. But very slowly, I pulled myself up. I relied on my faith. That's what got me through. Um, and very, but slowly by slowly, I began to walk again. And then Spirit said to me, okay, I need you to go in another direction. I need you to become an educator. I need you to write a book. And so my first book was Powerful People, Powerful Lives, and I wrote that. And I started to teach. I taught what I knew. And what I taught was how to reinvent yourself, how to be resilient. But I also taught children, really, the power of who they are as people. And I didn't mention landmark education. That helped me a lot. It just released a lot of the toxicity. It was kind of emotional toxicity I was carrying. Which, after the, um, the wisdom tooth extraction, left me like this. So I have severe rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia. But I got rid of the fibromyalgia, but this is what remains. And ladies and gentlemen, it does not stop me one bit. Woo! -hoo! Not one bit. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, but a lot of being resilient is your mindset. It's all about how you think about things. And all about knowing your purpose. What am I really here to do? I'm here to impact people's lives. I'm here to actually have them discover their purpose. 
and to move their lives forward. That's really what I'm here to do. And as long as I'm doing that, I am happy. I mean, really happy beyond. I am joyous. Let's put it that way. So um, from being an educator, I went on then to college and I taught there. And I impacted the lives of special needs kids. I have a heart, Jenny, but I'm not. I have a very heart for special needs children. And so I was able to impact their lives. Um, but then Spirit said, okay, you need to shift. I listened to Spirit a lot, so I need to shift. And I was able, at my later age, now listen, resilience and reinvention can happen at any age. But just don't think that because you're mature, I notice I would use the word mature, right? That you can't do something. And when in my 50s, I went back and got my doctorate in neuropsychology and, and education, because that was what my background is in. And I can tell you, it's made all the difference in the world. So now I thought, huh, with a doctorate, surely, surely somebody would want me, right? Surely, one would think. No, 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 no. Those doors slammed in my face over and over and over again. So I couldn't get a job until I found a lady. I said, come on, I am working with children and families and they really, really need help with co-parenting. They are really destroying each other and their children. Why don't you come and work with me? And I did. So I became a consultant to um, people going through divorces. So do you see though how being resilient, that journey has gone through. I'm able to just mean that and flow and flow and flow and flow with the spirit. I don't get stuck because it's a flow. And so I would encourage all of you to just flow with the spirit. Just allow yourself to soar. So here I am, right, seven years later, um, doing my co-parenting journey and then Spirit said to me, start your own business now. Ah, right? Like my own business, like Jenny and Judy will tell you. Being an entrepreneur is not easy. It is really not. You have to really love what you do. And so I'm passionate about what I do. And um, I see some of my friends here that have helped me along the way, Gail and Joan and April, um, you know, and Susan. I mean, just if it wasn't for good friends and family, I wouldn't be here because when I was at my lowest, they would say, girl, you only have like two seconds to get off it, okay? <laughs> get it together. And you know, that's what has helped me make it through. So now I'm publishing my second book, um, The Art of Resilience, because I teach and I write about what I've gone through, <laughs> what I've experienced and what I really, really know. And that's, um, who I am in a nutshell, just one resilient woman reaching out to other resilient women so that you can have a community of resilient women. Because right now, at post pandemic, that is exactly what's needed and wanted. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, definitely. My yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Joy. Oh my, oh my goodness. Yes, you know, I honor. It's an honor to see a woman who practices what she says. And the first time I saw her, believe it or not, uh, after hearing a story and she started telling me about the dentist and I've gone to dentists on a regular basis. We all go and, you know, and then she put, pulled her hands like this and she showed me her hands and she says, this was a freak accident which happened to her. I said, oh my God. But she says, I'm not in pain. Don't feel sorry for me, Guinea, because I know I need to get up and keep spreading that joy in the world. And my friends, mm -hmm. my awesome friends, please open your mics if you have any questions from Dr. Joy. It'll be a pleasure. I'm sure she would love to connect to all of one, each one of you. And uh, and uh, you know, I'm I'm in the chat. I you know I put her link to her page. She is on LinkedIn. Please do. Dr. Joy is a joy in the world, and her art of resilience. When she talks about it, she actually practices it. Yeah. Jenny, I wanted to mention something too, I forgot. Most of you don't know this, but some of my friends do. But in August last year, I lost my only son. Now you tell me, how do you come back from that? Wow. Right? He was 35 years old. He lived a full life. 
he had completed his race, he had fulfilled his purpose. And I really got that every soul that comes to this planet has a shelf life. And you don't know how long you have. So what he actually taught me is, mom, you need to live every day to your fullest. No matter what you have, you do that. And I promise you, you'll be all right. So I'm sharing that with you because that was completely unexpected. Do I miss him? Absolutely. But I really treasure the time that we had together. It was phenomenal. And so that's what I hold on to, the good memories of him. And that's what helps me be resilient. And, <laughs> and leave it. And live every day to your fullest. So true. Yeah. So true. That's a, such a great lesson. Yes, it is, uh, Judy. But I'll be honest, when I came to know about Dr. Joy's loss as a mother, and most of us can relate to that, the only son and a young son and such in his prime age, I picked up the phone, but Dr. Joy was unbelievably resilient. She said, Guinea, I want to honor his legacy, his memory. And I took a deep breath. And every time I see her, I take deep breaths because I really, I wish nobody is tested the way she's being tested in, in her life journey. But we all know life is unfolding the way it is unfolding. So Dr. Joy, big warm hug to you. We really honor what you bring to the world. And we are there for you. We are there to support you any way we can. Thank you. Any way we can. And any questions? We have a, another couple minutes here before we get on to our, um, our next part of the event, which is learning about each other. Um, any questions or comments for Dr. Joy? There's great comments in the chat. Just such a lot of love going on here. Yes, it has to be when Joy is there. <laughs> Everybody has to be full of joy. <laughs> Dr. Joy is a pleasure. You know, I'm, I really, I'm, I'll encourage each one of you uh, to really reach out to her. Have a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know, we all need friends like her to nudge you, to help you become better, better versions of you. We all have our moments. We all have our days. We all need each other. So please, please keep that in mind. Keep on doing your share in making this world a better place and keep on reaching out to the other friends who truly you need in your world to make you who you want to be. And Susan had a question, Dr. Joy. She wants to hear more about your, your new book. And I know you are having something going on about the book. Um, and I know, Guinea, you probably have a link to it. Maybe we could at least share that. And Dr. Joy, if you could talk just a little bit about that. Yeah, so in 2019, I had talk about being resilient. After I was finished my doctorate, I was so despondent. I said, what can I do to pick me up? And I went around the world. It's me and three heavy suitcases. I started in Fiji and went to different countries. And I was curious to know what were other women, what made them resilient? And I found amazing women, both in Australia, New Zealand, and then right here in my own backyard. As, and I call them all phoenixes because phoenixes rise from the ashes, no matter what's going on. So we have Phoenix Jenny, we have Phoenix April, we have Phoenix Joan, we have Phoenix Gail. Any other phoenix? We have Phoenix Donay. Any other phoenixes in the room? Okay. Uh, these Sally's here. Phoenix. Oh, Sally. Hi, Phoenix Sally. Okay. <laughs> the women who lent their stories, their heartfelt stories, as to what has made them resilient, and their poetry, beautiful poems called I Am Poems. So in the book, you not only get the stories, but you get the essence of the woman in a poem. And they've made really, really beautiful poetry and uh, beautiful stories. And then, surprise, now this is a what I call a new age book. <laughs> in the book, you have a code, a QR code that takes you right to the Facebook page where you can interact with the phoenixes and talk about what you've learned from them. And it's so great and a bitly code. So 
this is an exciting, exciting um, uh, product that we're bringing out. And I can't wait to um, have it hit the market. Um, do any of the audiences want to comment on the experience of writing this story or poem? You know what, uh, it's a, let me share with the community a phenomenal thing. It's Dr. Joyce's birthday on February 10th. Happy birthday. We all need to be there to wish her a happy birthday. And that's the day she's launching her book. What a great combination. And the first time I met Dr. Joy and I said, Dr. Joy, Joy and Jolly. Joy and Jolly need to come together. <laughs> So oh, yes, my friends, each one of you are going to get a personal invitation. It's February 10th. Just mark mm -hmm. your calendars. It's going to be, we'll send you all the you know, links and all. Um, it, it's going to be in the evening. We'll have a fun party along with the book where you can you know, get access to the book. 21 women from different parts of the world coming together. Dr. Yeah. Joy is the, is the reason for them to come together. And uh, I was honored. Dr. Joy asked me to represent India. And I said, my honor, my honor. So yes, yeah. you will see a glimpse of Dr. Joy travel to the world <laughs> and finding all these phoenixes everywhere. Yeah. I, I want to jump in. This is, this is Gail. It, it's so overwhelming to be here with all of you. Um, I wrote an I am poem. And I, I think it surprised me, not a little bit, but a lot because it really took me back to my roots. And as I wrote it, I felt like a little girl on a journey all the way up to the woman who I am now. And, um, you know, still that unfinished product. And it was, it was very emotional mm. to do. Oh my but goodness. I'm glad that I did it. Gail, I love the fact she said unfinished product. Can you imagine, can you see the wisdom Wisdom, my friends, may, you know, just weigh each word of hers. Wisdom, my friend, this is called wisdom. This comes with, you know, lucky are the people who get that, to get that stage. So I'm really excited to invite each one of you personally to Dr. Joy's birthday celebration. And yes, Gail, we would love to hear that poem that day. We would love to hear more about that book that day. Uh, each one. Anybody, somebody's raised a hand. Kiana, you want to say something? Yes, I wanted to just thank you so much for sharing your story, Dr. Vaughn. I absolutely love that resilience. That's something that I myself have been experiencing over the years. And I wanted to also share my daughter, she's going into um, clinical and developmental psychology, working with special needs children. And so when you were sharing that with me, that really, um, you know, inspired me to continue to encourage her to go that path because there's such a need, like you said. And yeah. um, I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn and just, you know, cool. learn a little bit more about your process and, you know, things I maybe would have shared with my daughter and, you know, how you got to do what you're doing as a consultant. Because I think that's what she'd like to do is help the children and the parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. so needed right now. And yeah, we have, we also, well. we also have Joan, if, uh, Joan, if you'd like to ask your question, um, and we, we want to move on soon, so we get a chance to meet each other too. So yes. Joan, Joan, what's your question? Well, no, I'm one of the contributors. Oh, and awesome. Joy, Joy and I trotted through our doctorates together. Mm -hmm. And I think we're both in our seventh decade. <laughs> and you learn from decade to decade that your core remains the same, your, mm -hmm. your purpose. However, the outcomes are different. So that is why reinvention and resilience is imperative because if you are not resilient if you are not flexible then you will break yes. you know so uh, it it it's a choice um how you express your resiliency but it's almost not a choice 
to be resilient. Because if you intend to live to be 80, you've got to get through a whole decade of age discrimination, mm. physical reduction in physical strength. Your intelligence increases because when one thing fails, something else in the human body improves. So the resiliency becomes more what Joy said, a mindset, a determination that you're going to get through this. And the I am is your vision of what you see you getting to. Mm. So that's you know, I want to make it to 80. I have uh, five and a half more years. I want to make it to 90, so I have 15 yes. minutes. I want to make it to 100, so I have 25 and a half more years. And every day, who, whoever said the moment, you know, because if you don't live in the moment, Miss it. you are overwhelmed. Yeah by everything that is happening. Oh my goodness. Wisdom. Thank you, Joan. Thank you for that. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Can you see my friends? Wisdom. Yes, <laughs> so much. We all wisdom. need to be Dr. Joy. We will, we will be there for your celebration, birthday celebration and your book. And we would love to hear more and get more soaked into the wisdom of all the phoenixes who you have brought together and have brought together in a beautiful combination of, of your next project, next book. And then we are praying for years, years of your life because we need to have more of that wisdom again and again. again Absolutely. And again. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you so much, Dr. Joy, for your wisdom. Thank you, Vinny. <laughs>